Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 15th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. Beware the Ides of March because at Derby Hill there are south winds and possibly a large hawk flight. So Kim and I got out early to scan the lake. The lake was nice and calm, but there was a moderate southerly wind and it was fairly warm in the morning. Not as many ducks around today and less variety than other recent days, but still enough birds to pick through. And the coolest moment was I was taking a video of Kim scanning through her spotting scope and then I panned over towards the lake. And when I stopped the video, I looked up and an American woodcock was flying right by my head. It flew within a few feet of me and over towards the cottage. And the cool thing was actually in that video I took, you could see the woodcock flying in off of the lake. It was a beautiful morning with a lot of sunshine and a thin layer of clouds, so a great sky for spotting hawks. A moderate southeasterly wind that picked up throughout the day to become a bit stronger and more gusty. And as the day went on, it did cloud over. And then around 3 p.m., we ended up getting a few short rain showers that kind of shut down the flight and it remained overcast after that. And we had a few more harriers, but the flight never really picked back up. With those southerly winds, we were expecting a big flight, and with it being a Saturday, we were expecting a big crowd. But don't worry, we brought the A team. In addition to myself, we also had two former Derby Hill counters. In the middle there is Dave Wheeler, and on the right is Anna Stunkel. While scanning through a flock of migrating Canada geese, we picked out a much smaller goose that is likely a cackling goose. Here we have a migrating flock of cedar waxwings. Here's a flock of wood ducks that went by in nice light. I'm always trying to photograph any flock of small birds that are going by. And on this one, we can see this bird on the right. Give us a nice wing shot and we can see that yellow stripe that indicates that these are pine siskins. We had small groups of turkey vultures moving throughout the day for just over 100 total. Earlier in the week, we had that very pale red-tailed hawk. And then today we had another one that was quite pale maybe just a little bit darker than the other one. And I got nice topside looks at this bird as well. And this looked normal on the top. So not a Crider's red tail, but just a very light Eastern red tail, most likely. We had thousands of blackbirds migrating in the morning. And unlike earlier flights in the season, which were mostly red-winged blackbird and smaller numbers of grackles, today's flight was largely grackles with a smaller number of red-winged blackbirds. Here's a kill deer, which was one of 28 that migrated past today. Here's a bird that I'm sure many visitors who came out today were hoping to see. This was the first of four golden eagles that migrated by. And we see that there's no white in the wings. This is likely an adult golden eagle. Here we have a hawk shaped like a flying cross with a large head and a long tail. And we can see the outer tail feathers are shorter as they tuck underneath the other feathers. This is an adult Cooper's hawk. We know adult because of the orange barring underneath. Here's a raptor with a long tail and long, somewhat pointed wings and an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier. We see it has pretty much no streaking underneath. This is a juvenile northern harrier. Here we have an adult red-shouldered hawk, one of 49 red-shouldered hawks counted today, and we're still in the peak of the adult red-shouldered hawks. We did have a few juveniles, but it's still largely adults this early in the season. Here we have a light morph rough-legged hawk, one of eight rough legs today. Here we have the top side of that same rough leg, and you can see as it was fighting into the wind and it pulled its wingtips back, they can look quite pointed. And you can see that the light morph rough legs also have a white base to the tail. Here's an adult red-tailed hawk that gave us a nice angle as it swooped through low. Here we have a very small hawk with a long tail with a very square tip because all of the tail feathers are the same length, and a small head with a bug-eyed appearance. This is an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a Cooper's hawk that was already passed and going away, but I wanted to include this photo because this bird has such a large full crop. And that just indicates that the bird has eaten recently, but this is probably the biggest crop I've ever seen on any raptor. So this Cooper's hawk had quite the breakfast. Here we have a small raptor with very pointed wings. We should be thinking small falcon and we see a lot of dark streaking underneath. So a small dark falcon is a Merlin. Here's a classic adult Cooper's hawk. We see that flying cross shape with a relatively large head, long tail, and long wings held out straight. If we take a look at the tail, we see the 
the tail is fanned a little bit. You can see the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones, giving it a nice rounded tip to the tail. And this bird has a lot of orange barring underneath. There's some variation to the amount of orange that the adults show, but this is just a really nice, heavily marked adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have an adult sharp-shinned hawk, and compared to that Cooper's hawk, just smaller, more compact looking. All of the tail feathers are the same length, giving it a very squared off tip to the tail and a small head with a bug-eyed appearance. Here we have an eagle and we see a large head and a lot of white throughout the underside of the body and the wing pit area. This is an immature bald eagle. Here we have a really beautiful raptor with a very white plumage overall, a gray head, some dark here to the wingtips and the trailing edge of the secondaries. Looking at the shape, it's a long tail, kind of long skinny wings, very lanky looking overall. This is an adult male Northern Harrier. You know, sometimes it's really hard to tell sharp-shinned hawk from Cooper's hawk, but this is the most sharp-shinned hawk looking sharp-shinned hawk I've ever seen. This is almost cartoonish in how perfect it is. It's so compact looking. The eyes look comically large on this small head, a very squared off tip to the tail. So this is sharp-shinned hawk all day. Here's one that's always a crowd favorite. This is a dark morph rough-legged hawk. You can see that dark plumage to the underside of the body and the head and also the wing coverts. And looking at the shape of the bird, you have kind of longer, thinner wings than you would see on something like a red-tailed hawk. And really the rough-legged hawks are the only beautio that we see a lot of the dark morphs of. Now it is possible that we might see one or two dark morph red tails over the course of the season. And it's also possible to get a dark morph Swainson's hawk or a dark morph broad-winged hawk, but those are extremely rare. Here we have an adult red-shouldered hawk, and I like the way it has its tail twisted so that we can see the upper side. And when we look at the tail of a red-shouldered, it kind of looks like thin chalk lines on a blackboard compared to the broad-winged hawks we'll see later where those white bands are a bit wider. Here we have an eagle where the head looks small compared to the length of the tail, and we see a bit of gold to the nape. This is another golden eagle, and this one gave us a really nice look as it came overhead. Here we have another light morph rough-legged hawk, and on this bird we see a dark trailing edge to the wings, indicating that it's an adult, and we see a very bibbed appearance, and we see multiple tail bands. Those indicate that this is likely an adult male light morph rough-legged hawk, which is my favorite plumage of them. Here we have a hawk that's different from the other ones we've seen, so let's see what's distinctive about this bird. If we look near the wingtips, we do see some translucent crescents where the sun is shining through. And we see somewhat squared off wingtips with five feathers making up the wingtip. This is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. And we're not seeing many of these yet. We're mostly seeing the adult red shoulders, which have that much more distinctive orange and black and white plumage. But as we get over the next few weeks and then into April, we'll largely be seeing the juvenile red-shouldered hawks, which can look extremely similar to the juvenile broad-winged hawks. And when we get to having to tell those two apart, we're really looking at the wingtips and we'll see the broad wings have a much more pointed wingtip and they don't have the translucent crescents. Here's an adult sharp-shinned hawk coming head on and we had quite a few sharp-shinned hawks come through nice and low today. Here's another adult red-shouldered hawk, and you might be able to identify it simply off of that distinctive plumage. But if we look for that same shape we saw on the juvenile, we'll see that the wingtips are very squared off with those five feathers making up the wingtip. And we can see a little bit of those translucent crescents where the sun is shining through. Here we have another light morph rough-legged hawk, and we see that dark trailing edge to the wings, so we know that this is an adult. But sometimes it's hard to tell males from females for sure. Looking at the overall plumage of this bird, we would assume that it's a female, but if you look at the tail, it has multiple tail bands, which is more of a male trait. So you'll see some that do have mixed traits, and you have to kind of make an assumption. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings. We should be thinking small falcon, and we see overall this bird is very light colored underneath. This is an American kestrel. Here we have an eagle with a large head and a lot of white in the wing pit areas. This is an immature bald eagle. In fact, by looking at the brown head and the even trailing edge to the wings, this is a juvenile bald eagle. And when you see juvenile bald eagles in the fall, usually the underside of the body is solidly brown. But by this time in the spring, a lot of them have this more 
light brown appearance rather than the dark brown. I feel like I'm not showing very many red tails, even though we had 92 of them today. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk. Notice the belly band and the dark patagial bars indicating red tail, and the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail indicate that it's an adult red-tailed hawk. We had three great blue herons migrate by today. And for this next bird photo, look away if you're squeamish because you may not like this. Here's a common raven that flew by in the afternoon carrying some sort of rodent, possibly a chipmunk maybe. And to end with, here we have a male red-bellied woodpecker showing off its eponymous field mark. And it's also showing off its tongue. Taking a look at the eBird list, today we had 66 species. We had no new species for the season today, so we're still at 86 total species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 101 turkey vultures, 6 bald eagles, 23 northern harriers, 46 sharp-shinned hawks, 17 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 49 red-shouldered hawks, 92 red-tailed hawks, and 8 rough-legged hawks. We had 4 golden eagles. And for falcons, we had 4 American kestrels, 4 merlins, and 1 peregrine for a total of 355 migrating raptors. That brings us to a season total of 1,566. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking windy with rain developing in the afternoon, a high of 63 and winds south-southeast at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So it's a great wind direction, maybe a little bit stronger than we would like, a little bit stronger than it was today. And it's hard to tell from the forecast, but I would assume it will probably be gloomy for the entire day. And that may also hold back the flight. And with that rain moving in in the afternoon, that will almost certainly shut down the flight. But there's a possibility we may get some raptor movement, especially in the morning before that rain hits in the afternoon. So I'll be out looking and who knows, maybe we'll be surprised and get a decent flight. But looking like it'll be only a partial day at that. Looking ahead to Monday, it's looking cloudy with temps cooler, only in the mid to upper 30s and winds west-northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. We'll probably be at the south lookout because of the northerly component to the wind, and we'll probably get some migration. I wouldn't be surprised to see some vultures moving and small numbers of other things, but looking less favorable than other recent days. And for Tuesday, it's looking sunny with a high in the low 50s and light southeasterly winds, so a good wind direction, but fairly light, and the blue skies may make spotting difficult. Would expect moderate migration for Tuesday. All right, what more can you say? A great day of hawk watching at Derby Hill and a lot of people out to enjoy it. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.